Hello and welcome again. We, in our previous tutorial, we were able to set up the authentication URLs. We were able to set up the login under the account and uh, the sign up. And whenever you click on this, uh, either the sign up or the login icon, you can be able to uh, start up. However, we encountered an issue when you were trying to log in. And uh, just as an example, let's try logging in. And you'll realize that uh, when you log in, uh, our, our portfolio or our uh, browser, our website is trying to access the profile, which we do not have. So I'll just uh, log out. And then there's an, there's an addition that we will make in the settings.py. Uh, and it is, uh, we are going to add the login redirect URL. Uh, so at that whenever you log in, uh, you can get, you can navigate to the home. And let's see if that, uh, that is going to work. Just open my browser. And I'll log in. Then I will attempt to put the password and then I can click on login. Now you see that we have been able to, to log in successfully and you have navigated into the home. So there's one thing, uh, how do we know that we have been able to log in? There is no kind of visual, uh, something visual to show us that you have been able to log in. And then we also, you're also missing the logout. You realize that I've been typing the logout URL manually, which should not be the case. Uh, so let's uh, first of all, uh, add the logout. Uh, so that whenever you log in, you can see the logout uh, in the drop down, or probably you can also see it on the side here. Okay. So I'll go, I'm going to go to the template the base template however we have the sign up and uh, the uh, the login so this drop down that you can see here in the code uh, takes care of this yeah so once a user has been able to log in logically they should not be they cannot sign up and they already logged in they have to probably sign out so that they can be able to uh, to log in. So uh, in the drop down, something I'm going to add. I'm going to add an if statement. If user dot is authenticated, then do something, and then we need to add an else, and then you also need to end the if condition. And if. So we are going to add inside here. So when I ever user is authenticated, then I'll just copy these and add the logout account logout. And I will also change the text into logout. And if the user is not authenticated, then they, they will be seeing these other URLs here. So if the user is on that authenticated, they can see the logout URL. And if the user is not authenticated, then they can see the uh, login and the sign up. This. We do not need it. And then after doing the refresh, can look at our page. So let me log in. Then you can see what we have. So you can see now we only have the logout. Okay. The logout. And I think I will also change this so that when if the user is authenticated, then this button should be are disabled uh, instead uh, so that they cannot sign up when they are still in a, there's an active session. 
So I'm going to log out and uh, put the button. It's in the home. So also add an if a similar. Let me just copy the if statement. And else. You can end if. Okay, I'm not sure if there's a disabled class or oh, anyway, we can just do it. You can just actually remove this. Set it if not, use as authenticator, then you can get that. So let's see if our logic is working. So we can let's do a refresh. Let's log in. So you notice that the sign up button has disappeared. So I will replicate the same <clears throat> into uh, these two, but uh, in the about page and. Uh, Yeah, let me see. So they disappear whenever if the user is uh, logged in. So I'll navigate to or I'll go to the about. And I'll look for these two buttons. So I'll set up the if statement again. If not is authenticated. And we will be able to see this too. Then we end if. Okay, let's refresh the home the about. Oh, let me save it. Okay, so let me log out and then try and log in again. So if you navigate to the about page, you still have this. Uh, let me wrap. Steve that contains the the anchor tags or the links. Okay, so this button seems to seem to still be there. So let's see what's if not user is authenticated, show this. Uh, yeah, working on the about page. So we have if not user. Is authenticated. Yeah, we have an issue here. It should be authenticated. I think the typo is on it was causing issues. So you can see that we do not we no longer have that page. So let me log out. 
and go back to the about page. You notice that you can see the buttons. Uh, let me log in once again. So whenever I log in and uh, go to the about page, you'll see that we do not have those. We no longer have those buttons. Okay. Yeah, so the other thing is uh, whenever you come into the uh, this login form, you notice that we have these checkbox. Remember me. So we can check the all of documentation for the configurations and one of the configurations is uh, uh, remembering the account session. Uh, there are so many, but we're just going to look at one or two. So we have these account session remember, uh, which say that it controls the lifetime of the session. Uh, so if it is set uh, to none, then it's going to ask us whether to, to remember. And uh, you can see that's why we have this checkbox. So if you want to do away with this checkbox, you can add one, uh, this one line, uh, this account session remember in the settings.py file. So let's just add it below here. And you can set it to true. Okay, so notice that we have this checkbox. And uh, now if I do a refresh, you see that it disappears. And that is uh, on the uh, configuration. Uh, there are so many other uh, configuration uh, parameters. We call them that. And then in the, inside the sign up, uh, probably you are not, you do not want to have these uh, password fields uh, repetitively. So there's another uh, command for the. Uh, there's another configuration that is account uh, sign up enter password twice. So when signing up, let the user type their password twice to avoid typos. So if you would want to disable this, uh, you can just add uh, this configuration into the settings.py file. And then you can set it to false. And uh, whenever we save and you can do a refresh, you notice that now we only have one uh, password. Then uh, but for this one, I can just completely comment it out. I, for me, I prefer, in my case, I prefer entering the password twice. And then we have the login of the username. So you can uh, force the email login uh, so that the users don't necessarily use the username. And for an email login, you can, we have several parameters. We have the account uh, username. Uh, username required. So this states that the user is required to enter a username. So by default, it is uh, true, as you can see inside this bracket. So you can set this to false. And uh, we, we have additional parameters that we need to add. I believe on its own, it's not going to work. Uh, let's see. You see it's email, but it's still optional, yeah, which is uh, crazy or it does not you know, correspond to our logic because if it is optional, then what do we use? And anyway, we'll still have to uh, use the username. So I'll go back and then we have the, you can specify an uh, authentication method and this starts with uh, account email authentication method it should be somewhere account email required yeah we also have this the user is required to hand over an email address when signing up uh, but we also have email authentication So we have account email required. So we can add it here and then we'll set it to true. And then we also need to enforce a unique email address so that you won't sign up with the same email. Okay. 
account. This one is under unique. Somewhere down here. Account unique email. Just search. Here we have this account unique email, uh, which is okay by default. Anyway, it's uh, true. But you can probably also specify it. So as you can see, there's many parameters that you can work on. So I'll just comment this. And then we also have the account authentication method. As you can see, it states that you need to set the account authentication method to either username or username and email. So let's copy this parameter and set it to point to email. And you can set it as a string. Okay, as you can see here, we're in double quotes. So let's see whenever we have, uh, let's probably save this first and then we can do a refresh. So you can see that we have the email, uh, email sign up. And then we also have the, in the login, we have the email rather than the username. Initially it was a username and let's just probably comment out these and see what happens. So you see we are back to the username and even in the signing up back to the username and an optional email. But if I go back to this, let's see what happens. See now we have the email which is not optional. It's a must for you to sign up using the email. And also equally here you have to use the, uh, the email. Yeah, so we've, uh, could say that we've been able to configure the user authentication and fix the issue that we had previously. So for more details, you can uh, check this Django all auth uh, documentation. And uh, uh, before we, uh, maybe we end these tutorials, uh, we can probably add our commits and a git uh, commit a ladder commit message uh, and I'll push to GitHub. Yeah, so uh, we've been able to set up the all auth, Django all auth uh, configuration. And uh, in the next tutorial, we are going to see how we can uh, set up our blog. Okay, because now we have been able to work on the home page, the about page, the, blog, uh, the contact page, and then the account uh, authentication. So we are going to see how we can work on uh, set up our blog. And uh, uh, yeah, so if you like this video, please uh, draw, uh, put a like. Uh, you can also share this video and also the playlist with uh, those who are probably getting started or trying to understand the ins and outs of uh, Django. And uh, don't forget to click on the bell icon uh, so that whenever I upload new content, you can be able to get a notification. Thank you for watching.